Um, thank you for coming um, um, tonight, and thank you for hosting me. Um, yeah, we were going to have a conversation about our Hokkaido adventure, um, but first I'm just going to show you some images to get a little bit of context for this work, which um, is the fourth kind of variation of this work that I'm making. So we're going to to get, to look at, look at some other um, shells and uh, mollusks um, and um, hear about some other places as well. Um, so this is um, this is a detail of um, the first iteration. This is like you know how if you have experienced the installation, you kind of encounter it as this floor, like a field. Um, and um, it's sort of various senses involved in exploring this work, but um, there is this kind of back and forth between the field and the almost abstract connection with the ground and the very detailed connection with the ground, which makes itself heard as you walk on it. Um, and so this is one, just a, a detail from... Um, Bergamo uh, in Torino, um, where there was um, 12 tons of shells. This is another uh, variation in Berlin, um, where you see that the these shells come from the North Sea, um, and uh, they're more subdued, kind of grayish mollusks than the spectacular scallops of, of Hokkaido. But you know, it's essentially it's the same thing. And this is, well, it's not it's the same and it's not the same, of course, like every, or, or, you know, the, like the beauty of organic material. Um, but um, maybe this image is good to kind of um, talk about the floor actually. And because this is my, you know, this is the sculpture is like my my long, noisy, unsettled conversation with cement and concrete, um, and the kind of there there are several paths to explore. But just to walk you down the path of the concrete path a little bit, which also feels so relevant here with the omnipresence of skyscrapers and the Tokyo Highway, etc. So I've been interested in like you know, um, this gap that exists when we try to approach these materials that come with such, um, they come in such big volumes and they're sort of presented to us with a very kind of anonymous surface. And, and concrete has really become one of those things, right? Where it's, um, it's, it's, it's so detached from its source. And I, th I think this kind of, you know, basic idea of really going back to the source is something that's very useful when we talk, when we have this conversation about ecology, um, is to kind of understand its origins. And when you think about concrete, you have this um, amazing, uh, ungraspable connection to biomineral processes, small organism, marine life, but you also have this. Um, you know, um, immense time to deal with because it's coming from limestone, it's coming from fossilized limestone. And I had this, um, I, for me, this work grow, like, grew out of um, spending a lot of time on this island in Sweden uh, where I, I'm every summer. And on this island, uh, there are lots and lots of limestone fossils. Uh, and hand in hand, there there is also the big cement industry. So it's like a community of geologists, and then there's a community of industry for concrete and big quarries. And they basically, this little island supplies large amount of cement for the entire Scandinavia. Um, and so, what brought me to this work was really having this. Yeah, like trying to approach this gap of like the experience of the physicality and the experience of um, finding something like a fossil um, 
and versus this experience of like the ubiquitousness of concrete, sand, glass that we experience in you know our constructed world. Um, and so I found that in the sound actually, and and in the the breaking of this form, which could feel a little bit brutal, you know. And I do think it's like an unsettled feeling to walk over the shells. It's not like walking on a polished concrete floor. Oh, um, it's quite the opposite. It's like uneven and, you know, it's noisy and you have this um, tactile, really tactile relationship with the ground. Um, and in that crack um, is what I'm interested in. That's like where the sculpture happens in this in this crunch, which is really like a bodily connection between us, our biomineral nature, our skeleton, and these forms. Um, and again, this, this kind of unapproachable <laughs> relationship, I feel, can be somewhat um, approached through this, this sound. Um, and our own participation, of course, in, in in kind of transforming this work, which will be transformed over the time of the exhibition. So, the, you know, the longer the show and the more we walk on it, the more it will also kind of uh, break down and resemble what we maybe recognize more as building material, like this powdered form, you know, they come in these sacks and we don't really um, see what they are anymore. Um, this is another um, variation, which was in Torino, which is the largest one. It was in a more industrial building, the Officini Grande Operatore, uh, and uh, it was shown together with this video work. We're not going to talk about that now. Um, this, do we have time to just look at some more? I, I basically, I just, I just chose some sculptures that really relate to the ground. So the ground and the floor for me is like my space, you know, my sculpture space. This is the Venice Biennale and the Nordic Pavilion uh, a couple of years ago uh, where I showed these, um, as, yeah, this combination of um, gum uh, from pistachio trees that were uh, casted onto these pillars and it was uh, another work that would kind of slowly crawl and transform over time and collapse. Uh, ever so slowly, uh, I chose this material. I got to know this material over a long time, and I chose it for its, you know, uh, slow nature, like really slow nature. Because I am very interested in in time and how to kind of inhabit time in in a way that feels slightly disorientating. And this is one of those examples where you sort of see time recorded, but you cannot see it happening in front of your eyes. You have to step away to understand what's happening. Uh, and they were shown together with, ah, sorry, these um, subterranean cables, which is another body of work that I've been uh, doing for um, some years. And I've worked a lot with electricity in the past, uh, but these are like these um, really short, um, chopped off, like chopped up forms um, that sort of, um, well, you know, to talk about the floor again, you know, these are the ones that um, cover uh, large, large distances under sea. Uh, and I'm just showing them like this in this uh, short form to see the, to understand the physicality of the object, the cross section of the object, and to somehow speak to the unimaginable distances that they cover by showing its shorter form. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, so you, you encounter, it's also like you encounter, because I'm interested, so I'm, I'm you know, really um, materiality to kind of bring out, um, I suppose, um, I don't know, I, you know, this industrial kind of passive way of thinking of material to kind of, um, uh, push against that and to show something else, to present it in this other uh, way to encounter um, an object, but also, of course, its materiality. And again, its source material and its 
it's kind of detached function. So memory is another part of this, uh, which is also the title of the shell work upstairs. Um, but we maybe it's too much to go into. Um, this is another floor work, which is um, with stones and water. Um, sorry. So, um, and there's, um, again, this kind of, this was a, a work that I've been doing, thinking about like how to, how to somehow um, mm, work with the fluidity of water uh, by showing it in its strange static form. So it's held together by this micro hydrophobic coat that sort of follows, traces the edges of the stones, and then you you kind of experience the, um, the surface tension and the, the sculpture itself sort of just reflects everything around it. And this is a very early work that I just wanted to include because it's one of my first sculptures and it was also involving water and cement and it's another kind of durational, transformational sculpture. But maybe we should uh, move on to Hokkaido. But it's very nice to go from this to this. <laughs> you know, it's a very, um, um, yeah, you kind of realize that you're always in that form, you know. Um, but this is from Hokkaido. Um, so, yeah, should we, do you want to ask me a question, Toko, or should I ask you a question? <laughs> ask me. I ask you <laughs> a question. Maybe I can uh, give a kind of brief introduction about like uh, our research trip in Hokkaido. We went to the place called Nakashibetsu. It's really, really, you can see the Russian border. So it's like a Hoppo-ryodo no temae gurai no tokoro nan deskedo. So we went out and uh, I s I've seen uh, Nina's work in Berlin and it was very beautiful, you know, like a shell floor. So I was kind of imagining like really beautiful shell that we are, maybe we could find in Hokkaido. But in the reality is uh, when we get to the, the place, we can get a lot of shell. It was like a, this, not beautiful. <laughs> and also there was really strong smell around. Um, or maybe previous photo. And um, now we can see the steam that you gave us when you're in this case. That's kind of the shell, all the shell are fermented. So there was so you know strong smell and also like a heat you can feel in front of the shell. And um, actually uh, there's like a hundred of like shell factory in Hokkaido, only in Hokkaido. And um, we got like five ton of shell in Nina's work at the Mori Art Museum. And then actually, uh, each factory produce uh, the five ton of like a discarded shell for one hour, like every hour. Yeah. Then it's happening like, you know, at hundreds of the factories. So you can imagine like how much we have to discard the shell. And also uh, they used to uh, throw away all the shell into the water, into the sea, but since the amount they produce is too much, so now like they cannot put it put back in the shell, uh, put back in the sea, so they have to throw it away somewhere in Hokkaido. <laughs> That's a really uh, very very uh, you know uh, important problem they're facing. So now like they you know like try to come up with the idea of how they can uh, recycle the shell, and the one way is to make it as a building material, that's what we, uh, you know, became part of it. Because after the show, we ship the old shell, shell back to the Hokkaido and make it a building material called shikui. So, yeah. But hmm? shikui? Shikui is a plaster, yeah. Japanese traditional plaster made out of 100%. And there is one German company who be part of the, some, uh, uh, the company in Hokkaido, yeah. So that's a kind of brief introduction of what we, then we, yeah, so should I ask you the question now? <laughs> so what did you find? Like uh, when you first look at the show, is there any different, like a scenario, different like impression that you you had previously in Europe in Escan? Yeah, not um, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I didn't know what we we're gonna find and I also didn't, 
you know, understand the process until we uh, went there and talked to the people who were working there, uh, etc. And just to, I think I, I didn't tell you where the shells, the previous shells, it sounds like I'm just using all these shells, uh, but actually, you know, um, the shells in, in that were in those installations in Europe, they they are um, they come from the construction industry. They're dredged out of the water uh, in quite brutal ways, uh, and they're sold by the tons. So you know, when we hear, I think it's so good that you said this thing about you know the five tons per hour because the masses here are are just uh, impossible to kind of understand. It's it's kind of like what we talk about the slurring time, when we talk about 500, 600 million years ago. It's the same with these volumes, you know, that uh, you know, the production of, of like that, what they take out of the ocean every day for the construction industry, what I'm using in the installation is obviously like a little blip, you know, and we try to take, think about how we return this material. Uh, but it's just to kind of provide this encounter with that material, which is treated as this kind of, um, you know, um, endless pour in a way, like with milk and electricity and concrete, you know, that there is this kind of um, uh, detachment from, from, from the source. Um, and um, the shells in Hokkaido, on the other hand, they come from the food industry, and then they return turn they become construction material afterwards in the recycling process um, so that's a, a a different process and you know with but in any case with everything you take up when you take this material up it's a big scrape and i want to be very clear about what we what we encounter up there, it's not like I'm trying to show a pristine image of nature that we're experiencing. We're really experiencing more. It's a meeting with a human extraction, actually, if you think about it, than the nature as such. Um, and, and this becomes very evident when you visit places like this. And, you know, as you said, the fermentation, the big trucks arriving. Um, here is, this is an image of, so they're grinding the material, and this is kind of where it ends up in these uh, sacks where it's been pulverized, and it's kind of, and this is me and Toku. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, maybe I, I think this, should we t open up to the audience for questions? Or was there yeah, something you want to... Yeah, I think you wanna... uh, we still have like five more minutes. Mm. Uh, yeah, then also like uh, to uh, recycle the shell and make it into uh, the building material, they consume a lot of oil to fire the shell and clean it. And also a lot of laborers. Like there are so many people, uh, most of them, some of them are from Vietnam. Like we have uh, this uh, social problem called Gino Jeshu Fair that uh, kind of foreign trainees that we invite uh, the foreign, uh, foreign student, actually, the young worker, uh, to train, to uh, let them learn the, this skill, but like a new job. But now like it's become like a, it's a source of like cheap labor. So now that's we, uh, another problem. But looking at, you know, like only the shell and uh, all the process of the recycle uh, has so many layers of like uh, the problem we are facing at the moment. So we really this trip was only two days, but there is so you know they make us think about like so many things and so from so many perspectives. So yeah, yeah. Thank you for for bringing that up, which is another um, aspect you know in thinking of recycling in in general. That every time you make something, if you want to unmake it it obviously requires all this energy as well it's not like it disappears into the recycling facilities and and of course when we speak about the agency of materials we should also speak about how human labor is implicated in this and what kind of bodies and who uh, are carrying out this work because um, this is a huge part of thinking about our ecology is also human relations um, and the kind of 
you know, exposure to toxins, exposure to um, labor conditions that are harsh, etc. You know, there is all this, um, like this, this porosity that we want to achieve. It's it's so hard. You know, there's so many, like there 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 are so many boundaries and so many. Um, um, distinctions that we humans impose all the time in order to establish these hierarchies, which you know we try to push against when we make <laughs> art, <laughs> and and you know when we speak about it, you know it's about destabilizing these hierarchies. And and I think it's really great that you bring up the human labor question because it's um, it was it it was immigrants who worked in the recycling facility, and it was also what we talked about, we um, Anu people, uh, indigenous people. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, maybe I have one short question yeah. because um, this, what does it mean for you to, to, because there are so many different ideas what our ecology could be and you can approach it from many themes and Timothy Norton once said all art is ecological, what I like a lot. But what does it mean for you to operate as an artist on the one hand, but at the same time also to make ecological art? Or what's your understanding of that? Um, wow. Um, I mean, I do, I, I do sort of agree with Tim Morton that all art is ecological. It depends what, yeah. But, um, but. And, and for me, it's like, you know, I, I never thought about that I make ecological art, but I was also always very interested in materials and honoring materials and having a deep connection with materials, which, of course, in that sense, what he's talking about, then, you know, there is, you know, it's kind of what we talked about a little bit with this unsettling or destabilizing of hierarchies, um, I think it is an ecological conversation. And, you know, as you said yesterday in the press conference that, you know, ecology comes from household. That's, you know, the original meaning of the word is to think it's, it's the household. Um, and, you know, our practice <laughs> is also kind of like this, this household. And it's a, I, I think it's a very useful term actually, because it's, it is, you know, to, to, um, It is ungraspable and it is so large, uh, but to think about it, to reduce it into this household um, kind of uh, word, I think is very useful. I don't know if that answers the question of, of you know, making ecological art, but, you know, the studio is a household somehow and, you know, uh, what comes in and out is kind of this evolving process, which, um, Which, I mean, I, I try to make work that's durational, transformational, and that honors the kind of, you know, uh, connections that are already, in, like, kind of embedded in the material. Um, and um, that requires this kind of tuning, yeah? It's, sorry, it's not about, me. it's not about me. It's not like I'm making art about ecology. You this know, is exactly it's, to, it's to write into something. This is the point: is yeah, that yeah. It's to go you don't with make something. work about something, but you write into something. Yeah, it is also not a show about something. I think it is a show with something, mm. and that's also how your work maybe uh, operates, mm. right? Yeah. So maybe yeah. if there are questions. Yes. Thank you very much. So after the exhibition, uh, the shells, what happens to the shell? So that's my question. So um, in, this, in this case, it will be recycled into construction material. Um, I like the idea of withholding it from the construction uh, business, actually. Uh, so this is, but this was the kind of, strange reverse process where it started with food and ended up with construction. So it's this kind of mm, um, 
yeah, fulfilling human purposes. Um, the material uh, that I've used before, there was the one went to like a beach restoration project and the other one w went to a gardening project in the Netherlands. So, you know, because the, the ocean is, you know, we're having an acidity problem with the ocean, but it's also in the ground and the soil. So it can also be used to kind of regenerate soil. Um, so, yeah. 今回この貝がえっと漆喰になるんですけど、その漆喰販売されてる会社は、So the plaster uh, is actually uh, sold by Aimori. So Aimori, if you purchase a plaster from Aimori, the company, I think uh, you will be actually using this shell uh, in the plaster. But the plaster made out of the uh, scallop shell is quite good. So it is really uh, effective and. Uh, the air can be cleaner by using the uh, shell of the scallop. That's what I learned from the uh, website, which I like to add is uh, when you say you have a difference uh, in terms of your sense uh, between your feeling in this museum and also in on the uh, on the beach. Well, yes, bringing the shell directly to this museum, as you saw in the picture, well, the, the unedible uh, part or pieces of the scallop is still attached to the shell. So it's really difficult to really bring those shells into the museum. So if you are stepping on the shell as is, then there is a sharp uh, piece and that may cut your uh, piece or cu that may cut your fingers or hands. So that's why we have to bake uh, or burn the shells first and then we have to clean it. So that's why that was really an artificial shell. So even though it was the natural objects, organic objects such as shells, but it was going through a certain steps, so it is getting closer to the artificial Pieces. So Nina-san's uh, uh, presentation, thank you very much. This is the end of Nina-san's presentation. Thank you.